So hey there peeps, let's take a look at electrical circuits, the series and parallel combination circuit. So far, we've looked at the pure series circuit, which is one loop around, like so. And we've also looked at the pure parallel circuit that has many loops, like so, um, for with the circuit elements. Circuit elements that we're gonna deal with right now are the voltage source and resistances, uh, resistors that will uh, dissipate that energy somehow that is provided by V source. V source provides the energy to the charge and these resistances here will consume that charge and uh, really probably dissipate it as heat, okay? So why is this a parallel combination circuit, uh, series parallel combination circuit? Because R1 is in series with the parallel combination of R2 and R3. We look at it over here, R2 and R3 are definitely in parallel. Why is that? Because they create a single loop between them. They have each of their uh, top and bottom leads are in direct contact with each other through these conductors over here. So R1, only one side of R1 is in direct contact with this uh, piece, so it is in series. R1 is in series with R2 and R3. Um, what we also have is that I total flows through R1, splits off into two branches, I, R2 and I, R3, and it would recombine over here and then keep flowing around like this, okay? So we get a split of the current, and also we have uh, voltage loops as well, where V source, VR1, VR2 make one loop, V source, VR1, and VR3 make the second loop. Now, if you're analyzing these circuits, one of the strategies that you should employ is to first find R total. And so what we're gonna do first is um, look at the fact that series combinations always add resistances together. So we're gonna add R1 to the parallel combination of R2 and R3. And that looks like this. R total is R1 plus the parallel combination of R1 and R2 and R3 rather. So it's a uh, one over one over R2 plus one over R3 for that parallel combination. So our gut check says this, the total resistance of the circuit has to be a little bit more than just R1 because we're adding some resistance here. Um, our second gut check says that this segment over here, um, the total resistance of R2 and R3, just this section over here, if we were to squish this down into one equivalent resistor, it'll be uh, less than either of these two values. So that's another gut check. So if you've got a value that's greater here in this um, circuit, that would be a bad thing. So you wanna make sure that this, these values over here are less than R2, either R2 and R3. And then when you add it to R1, it's gonna be a little more. Uh, the total resistance is a little more than R1 alone, okay? So once you find R total, what do we do next? Well, let's look at some of the properties of this circuit and we'll figure out what to do with R total so we can find some other key values of the circuit and kind of um, analyze its behavior, see how it compares to the pure parallel and pure series circuits. So here we go, there's some bullet points regarding the series and parallel combination circuits. Uh, from Ohm's Law, we'll note that we can find I total once we have found R total like we did before, okay? Uh, so I total is just V source over R total, okay? R total is that combination, series, parallel combination uh, calculation. Um, one thing that we've got to note though is that R total really depends on the position of R1 R2 and R3. In other words, if you rotate them, like volleyball, you have a different server. So let's say the series resistor is the server in volleyball, right? You're gonna rotate after uh, certain points. And um, what happens is that the value of R total will change based on who's serving, based on who's in the series part and who's in the uh, uh, parallel part, which is unlike the series circuit and the parallel circuit. In a series circuit, you can interchange the resistors, you'll get the same R total. In the parallel circuit, if you switch the positions of each of the resistors, you have the same R total. Not so in this case. That's why we've got to be really careful with the analysis because these R1, R2, and R3 positions do determine R total and the rest of the behavior of the circuit, including how much power it consumes. Uh, once you have I total, we note that from the what's called the junction rule, meaning that the current branches into the separate resistors, right? Uh, I total is I R2 plus I R3. So it's a simple little equation that we can write. Um, analyzing circuits is all about really writing little equations that we can then group together to help solve this uh, any circuit type problem and find all the values. V source is from the loop rule VR1 plus VR2 or it's VR1 plus VR3. Why is it VR? Why can you um, substitute VR2 for VR3? Well, that's because again they are in parallel with each other. 
R2 and R3 are connected in parallel, therefore they have to stay at the same voltage. By definition, anything connected in parallel will share the same voltage, same voltage drop on it, okay? So VR2 equals VR3. Well, what else can we say? Well, we can find VR1 because it was in that serving position, the first position. And um, so I total will flow through it, flows through R1, and so we can calculate the voltage on R1. So therefore, we can find VR2 from the loop rule, but I can solve for VR2 and knowing what V source is. V source minus VR1 gives me VR2, and therefore VR3 because they're the same. I can find the current flowing through R2, IR2, through Ohm's law again, and uh, many, many applications of Ohm's law, I even notice that that's the process for solving any of these circuits. Um, IR2 equals VR2 over R2, and IR3 from the junction rule, knowing that um, the currents flowing in have to flow out, I can find IR3 from I total minus IR2. I could have also found, if I wanted to, IR3 knowing um, VR3 as well. I can solve for VR3 knowing that it's the same as VR2. So many ways to solve here. This is just one path to getting the solution. Um, so one thing that we should also note is the power of this circuit. So the power of this circuit is, yeah, it's greater than a pure series circuit. The series circuit has very little power because each of those resistors is trying to limit the current to the uh, lowest it can and uh, when they're all connected in a row in series. And so they have the lowest power in that circuit. And the parallel allows for the most free flowing current and um, so that we have the most power. So it's somewhere in between. The power of this circuit is greater than a pure series circuit but less than a pure parallel circuit. So if you were to um, try and calculate and you got an answer you know, higher than the parallel, you probably did something wrong. Lower than the series, it did something wrong. It's a good gut check. But the power does depend on which of these positions you have. So they, there will be three different powers based on which one is in the serving position, R1, R2, and R3. So that's the, the property here of this particular circuit and as it's compared to pure series and pure parallel. Okay. So in your notice BA, there's also um, a, a, an example using numbers as well to come up with the, the full analysis to get all the values of the circuit. So we're talking about the voltages, the currents, and um, also the power of uh, each of the elements and in total. Okay, that's what it is. Series parallel combination, more add.